We are honored today to be joined by the one and only Hall of Fame head coach, Dawn Staley of South Carolina, gold medalist on the Olympic team, not only as a player several times over, but also as a coach several times over. And Dawn, we are pleased to get your insight today on the passing of one of the greats in women's basketball, one of your teammates, one of your colleagues on your staff there at South Carolina, Nikki McCray Henson, who will be inducted into the Washington Mystics Hall of Fame on August 20th here in DC. And first of all, thank you for joining us. Um, but when was the first time that you encountered the light that was Nikki McCray Henson? Um, I think I, I met Nikki maybe in 1994. Um, of course it was a USA basketball setting. Um, did, I, I didn't know her. I think I've, I heard of her, but like Nikki McCray in true fashion, um, she, she came up to me and she was like, you know, this is, this is, the Dawn Staley that when I got recruited at Tennessee, this is the person that they they recruited me to, to defend. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh and then the rest is, was history because that was just really Nikki. Nikki will tell you what's on her mind. Um and she comes from a just a place of innocence and purity that that you just can only love her. Like you really can only love her. And that's what that's what she meant to me and that's what she meant to so many other people that were fortunate enough to just eat, just have a conversation with them. Like we're lucky because we got a chance to spend uh, and make a lifetime of memories that mm -hmm. we'll, we'll never forget. Right. And I'm so glad that that 1996 Olympic team in particular was documented because we didn't know the rigors that you all went to in preparation for the Olympic Games in Atlanta, but what was that bonding like? And you just gave us a little snippet of what Nikki was like uh, during that time, just kind of coming right up to you and saying like, you're the Dawn Staley. But when you were on the road, like overseas, you guys were going over and playing in tournaments and and how rigorous that was, man. That was just a, a really great documentary. But what was that like? to do that with Nikki? Um, I mean, Nick, Nikki, Nikki was our, she was our baby. Like she was really the baby. We call her the baby um, because she was so sweet and so innocent, but yet worked incredibly hard. Um, it was fun. Like Nikki was funny, like funny. Like we would, we would, we would play this game called make me laugh. And what it was is one person had to get up and try to make someone laugh. And the first person to laugh had to get up and perform. Um, and and <laughs> Nikki and playing the game, we, we didn't really think Nikki was all that funny. So she mm -hmm. stood up there for a long time, but she was such a hard worker that she worked really hard trying to make us laugh. And we would end up laughing because, not because of the skit that she was putting on, but because <laughs> how hard she was was really trying to make it make us laugh so i mean it was indicative of of who she was as a person just an incredibly hard hard worker a pleaser her and ruthie used to used to want to dress me up because i you know i didn't i'm i'm casual i'm comfortable they like the little daisy dukes and the you know the halter tops and and so they they call themselves going to the mall, bringing me back an outfit, right? And I'm right. like, I'm, I'm not wearing that. Like I'm not. Wearing... I, I did try it on for them for them to take pictures. So I'm sure they still have those pictures that that haunt me every day. <laughs> but it was it was just those type of things that you know kept the kept the mood light. Right, right. Oh, I love that so much. I mean. You know, just being on teams for you, being on teams and coaching teams, you know, you set a lifetime of memories and that really just stands out to me a lot with what you're talking about and just kind of those little snapshots of moments that you shared with Nikki and the team. But when the Olympic team was the 
foundational piece for the WNBA and the ABL too, right? What was that like to know that you all collectively would be that for women's basketball history? Uh, you know, we we were we were we were already under pressure because we didn't win the gold medal in 1992. Mm-hmm. We were about to host in Atlanta in '96, and then maybe you know maybe a year or probably nine months prior to uh, the the ABL and the WNBA um, starting, they told us, they basically told us, well, actually it was the ABL first and everybody committed to the ABL because that was the only outlet that we had. And then maybe a month later, we find out that the WNBA is going to start. Um, but it, it put a lot of pressure on us to know that basically we were the guinea pigs to whether or not you know, women's basketball is going to be as popular or or just could stand the test of time. So we, you know, we we were we were under pressure, uh, under pressure to win the gold medal in 96 for for it all to happen. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but I, we were prepared for the moment. We were super prepared. I, I know I know that Tara probably gets, a, you know, uh, a lot of uh, you know, the 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 risks that that come with being the coach of of a team like like we had and what she put us through, um, but we were able to endure anything because of because of how she how she led us yeah. and it was a true sacrifice to her and her relationships with all of us because she wanted us to. She wanted us to form an incredible bond, togetherness. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it was literally us against her. She created it, but I think that was the only way that she knew how to do that during mm-hmm. that time. Because we were all individuals, mm-hmm. you know, and we we had to formulate and and create some chemistry. Um, right. And I, I do think with the friction that she created between us and her was the chemistry that was formed uh, that we needed to just not only endure winning a gold medal, but again, setting up women's basketball and, and we never looked back. Yeah. I think that's how it was done during those days. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Just, you know, sticking together with it. But when you all went professional after the Olympics and, you know, the gold medal, being awarded to you all, was there anything during that Olympic run that you shared, not maybe at that time, but when you were playing professionally in the WNBA, did you ever recollect about having that gold medal placed around your necks and the importance of that headed into being professional on our ground here in the USA? Um, you know, I, I think once the once the Olympics were over, it was it was almost like the ABL and the WNBA really took over. Like, and I, I don't think yes. we really understood the at the time. I don't think we under and I don't think in you know until this thirty for thirty on our on our team came out. I don't really people. I don't really think people knew the origin. And 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 prior to ninety six, there were other there were other um, pioneers that opened the doors for us to to have that platform that we really yeah. don't hear those stories about, you know, all those other pioneers that that allow this to happen. Um, but I'm, yeah. I'm I'm really happy that it came out so people can understand um why there's still a WNBA. I didn't I didn't really have a moment during that time. I I actually I was mentally drained. I had to take some time. I had to take some time off after after us getting our gold medals because I I my lifelong dream was to get a gold medal and to win a national championship. I didn't do that in college, but that was my dream growing up in in the projects in North Philly. And I got my dream yeah. at 26. So I'm just like, well, what else is there? Like I just this is it. Like Right. And, you know, after I had some time to step away from it, I came back and I just, you know, I never I never looked back. I love 
you know, I continue to love up on basketball and it has an incredible way of uh, continuing to love, love, love back on me. And, yes. and it's through like, it's nothing but the love of the game that is allowing me to continue on after losing someone as near and dear as, as Nikki has been to me. Like it's the love. She, she loved basketball. Like she loved, she loved it to her, her, her dying moments. Um, so, you know, I, I got to put one, one step in front of the other and continue because I know if Nikki was still here, um, she would, she'd be getting ready for the season. She'd be thinking about basketball. She'd probably working out. She's probably getting on somebody's, some of her players nerves by saying, are you working out? You know, you got to get in shape. You got to come back here ready to rock and roll. She would be that coach. She is that coach when it came to, you know, making sure that she stayed on every player um, for 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 their success and the overall team success. Mm -hmm. And what was it like playing against her in the WNBA? Like, I know you guys were head to head. We'll get to her coaching uh, after this, but there's that little segment that I, I kind of want to know about that a little bit. What was that like? Um, I mean, Nikki, Nikki was the ultimate competitor, you know, like she was, she was the one that picked up the ball. I was a point guard. So I would just tell her, you know, I would, we would talk to each other. Like, cause she could, she would try to hawk the ball. I'm like, Nick, Nick, don't, don't even waste your energy. Like seriously, you, you're not going to steal the ball from me. So don't even, I know you, I don't, I know your game. Like I, we spend too much time together. I know where you're right. going to reach. I, you know, I know. So don't waste your time. So we would laugh about that. Um, there was a time too where, where you know, Nikki, on our 96 Olympic team, she didn't really play a a a big offensive role for us, but she was very capable, as we saw in the ABL and the WNBA. Um, so, you know, I, I thought she played her, her very best basketball after the Olympics in 96. Like, you know, she really took her game, not even took it to another level. She was able to express herself, like her entire game, in that manner. And she, she scored a lot of points. She stole the ball a lot. She, you know, she could, she could shoot it mid range. She could shoot the three ball. She, she was a three way scorer. Um, but she was, she was just an ultimate competitor. Like we, we always went out to eat, whether we were in each other's, when we were in each other's towns, you know, I would pay when she was in Charlotte, she would pay when I, you know, when we came to DC and we always went, she always wanted to go to like the most expensive places too. When I, when I had to pay, um, I was a little light on the per diem when it came to, you know, her having to buy me dinner. <laughs> I love that so much. So in 2000, uh, Nikki was a, a repeat Olympian uh, with you again. And when you all kind of came through the WNBA and ABL segment from 96 to 2000, uh, what was that like to kind of say, hey, you know, you've already planted the seeds in 96, but now what was different about that that team in, in 2000 with Nikki? Um, I mean, that that team was a, a little different. We had a different we had a different head coach. Nell Fortner was our coach. And I actually just told this story to someone um, today. Like Nell was very pleasant, like very positive, always, you know, she didn't really have a negative thing to say. She coaches from a positive standpoint. And, um, and we, we probably weren't used to it. <laughs> so, 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 but, you know, Nell used to go off on these tangents and tell these stories. So we used to, we used to, I used to, it's wrong of me to do this, but I did it. Um, uh -oh. I used to make Nikki, and Delisha laugh in time at times in which they shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> but they, they wanted to play the game. So I played the game one time. I now we're we're in this hotel room and I'm I'm sitting in a chair. Nikki's sitting on the floor in front of me, like right in front of my feet. And then mm -hmm. Delisha and everybody else is, you know, lying on the bed or we just in this tiny room and Nell's we're listening to Nell talk about something i don't know we we like you once you, you heard them once you heard them all 
So I said, okay, I'm going to get them. So I had on flip-flops, and Nikki and Delisha always used to talk about my feet. So <laughs> I said, I'm going to get them. So I took my feet out of the flip-flops, and I started making my, you know, I started doing like this, making noises <laughs> right near Nikki, right? So, <laughs> and right when Mel is just like, she's pouring her heart out into us. <laughs> Right? So I'm flicking. Right? <laughs> so Nikki's like, Nikki, Nikki. Right? So I'm sitting to her left. So she started doing like this, right? Not trying to look at my Right? And she's shaking. And Delisha's up there. She's just moving. Right? So I keep flicking. This is Nikki now. Nikki says, excuse me now. Right? And then she started pointing at my feet. Because <laughs> she's cracking up like she is like she couldn't hold it. So when she pointed at my feet, and I'm like, I'm like, what? What you my feet? Like <laughs> right? she started, she started laughing. Right? <laughs> so so I mean, I mean, I mean, after that, it was hard to get back, get back to the place mm -hmm. Nell was going. Right. But after that meeting, after that meeting, that is the one story that we always recite when we see each other. It was it was the very best story. So I I I, I used to play crude crude jokes on Nikki because because I knew she couldn't she couldn't handle <laughs> not smiling. That's my right. that <laughs> that's right. Oh my gosh, it would light up a room that smile, <laughs> and after you all kind of put the, the basketball down as players, you came together as coaches at South Carolina. What was that like to get her on your staff and why was it her that was on the short list for you in that role? Um, you know, after, you know, after we took the job here in South Carolina, Coach Boyer was with me at Temple and, you know, she's got an incredible experience. And then I'm like, the next one was Nikki, like, Nikki had just got into coaching. Like, I think she was two years in at Western Kentucky. So I saw Nikki on the road, and I'm like, Nick, Nick, you coming? And she's like, what? I'm like, Nick, I basically I was like, I'm about to take this South Carolina job. You coming? And she was like, what am I supposed to do? I said, you, you got to tell your coach you give her two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I, you know, I don't want to. Nick. But she wanted to come, but she just, right. she did, she did. I mean, Mary, Mary uh, gave her her first job, mm -hmm. you know, so she was, she was loyal. But the pull of coming back to the SEC, you know, to come work with, with us and, and turn South Carolina uh, around was, you know, was, was pulling strings to her heart. And yeah. I just, it was Nikki. I, I, I'd never been a coach before. I didn't know really how to put a staff together. I knew hard work. I knew I knew hard work. I knew the type of coach, player, person Nikki Nikki was. And I was like, I gotta go get Nick. Cause we've been we've been through it. We've been in the foxhole together. We accomplished incredible feats. I was like, there's, mm -hmm. you know, there there's no other person besides Nikki who can help us get this job done and um uh, I thank God that we created the memories that we that we did here in South Carolina and 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 the Olympic Games and all of that but here is where we probably took our relationship to another level um because she 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 trusted me with her career like she I, I knew she wanted to be a head coach and there were there were things that she needed that that are that are easier coming from somebody that you know want you to be successful like nikki knew i wanted her to be successful nikki was vulnerable with me nikki you know allowed me to to guide her um and i'm not taking you know credit for it but because we experienced what we experienced for usa basketball i i kind of knew and she kind of knew who i was like i was her point guard you know, I was the one that when she when she wanted to 
deviate from the play and go back door. I was like, no, Nikki, that's, that's not your role <laughs> for this team. Like, that's not – I'm not turning this ball over. So I come out the game because you want to deviate. I used to tell her that. Right. <laughs> um, but it's, it was those moments that she knew that, you know, we, we were going to be a great match. Like, she right. worked hard. Like, she worked hard. Like, mm -hmm. like she sat – and I, I have to give, you know, a huge shout-out to Thomas, her husband. Like, the – the the only reason why Nikki was able to have the type of coaching career and career in general is because she had someone like Thomas who 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 allowed her that space to be great. He sacrificed. He sacrificed a great deal. And I know that because she's not with us right now, that he can he can rest assured he gave her the life that she wanted to live. So, mm -hmm. you know, Thomas moving here to Columbia, South Carolina, he did it. He moved to, you know, he moved to Virginia, you know, at ODU. He moved on up to, to Rutgers. He, every, every step of the way, he was right there with Nikki. He was the husband that God created those vows. And it was, it was very godly of him. Mm -hmm. Yes. to be her husband and the way that he did. So I, you know, I always, I always uh, appreciate Thomas. I do. I've, I've always done that because I know, I know what he gave up to give to Nikki. That's right. And they share a 10 year old son, Thomas Jr. And yep. when she was on staff, didn't that all happen it, during that time? It, it, it did. It did. Nikki, Nikki, you know, Nikki fought it for a long time not to get pregnant. It was probably, you know, her vanity because she didn't she didn't want to gain weight. She talked about <laughs> <laughs> she talked about she didn't want to gain weight. And we we had a we had a we had a bet in the office as to how much she would gain. <laughs> <laughs> she got mad when she found out that we did that to her. Um <laughs> but but when when Nikki had little Thomas Right. We, you know, we were talking about names. Obviously that's, a, that was, that became a thing in the office. Like, well, what are you going right. to name? It? Like, well, right. before that, when she got pregnant, right. She went, you know, it was, she was pregnant for a while. And then she had to do the ultrasound to figure out the sex of the baby. And she came, right. did the ultrasound, came to the office and said, show me the picture. Doctor said, it's a girl. I said, Nick, you're not having a girl. You're having a boy. Like I did from the, I said, you're not having a girl. And she's like, the doc, I mean, here's the picture. Here's what the doctor said. A few weeks later, she went back to the doctor. She did an ultrasound. The doc, her doctor told her in all the years that she's been practicing, she's never been wrong. Wow. Except that she's having a boy. <laughs> she's having a boy. So we like, well, what are you? You know, what are you she what are you gonna name him? And she went back and forth. Thomas wants a you know, Thomas wants a junior, you know, like you gotta you gotta give it to him. Like she was like, I mean, Thomas, like, <laughs> right? <laughs> so so okay, then I I mean, you know, I'm I gotta pat myself on the back. Now I, I did give her this option as a okay. middle name. Okay. So I said, Nick, name him Nixon, like Nick's son. Oh. And, and that's his middle name, Thomas Nixon um, Penton. Oh. So, so, I mean, I, you know, it's, it, he will have that forever. Like he will, he will <laughs> always know. I know, I know they made some great memories, but he will always know his mom because that's his name. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, you know, that was pretty cool moments um, to experience yeah. that. I was, I was, I was in the, I was in the room with her um, when, 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 well, I wasn't in the room with her when he was born. I was supposed to be. Um, mm -hmm. And I was there. Tom, little Thomas didn't want to come when he was supposed to come. Right. And, 
I'm going to get y'all this story down. Y'all might want to censor this, but That's I'm in a room. Thomas got one. Thomas, Big Thomas has one hand. I got the other hand. I'm holding her hand. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, the doctor comes in and the doctor's checking her out. She's like, oh, little Thomas doesn't want to come. So, y'all, I saw the doctor's gloved hand, right? Right. Then I only see an elbow. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, Nikki. I'm like, Nick. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, Nick. Oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, Nikki, she really couldn't feel it. She's like, what, 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 what's happening? I'm like, I, I, I'll tell you afterwards. I'll tell you afterwards. Um, so we have, we had, we had a lot of fun with that, but she ended up having to, to get a C section and, um, and and little Thomas was born, Aww. so that was it was pretty cool. Like these were, you know, incredible moments that I shared with Nikki. Right, and you also for for the joy, there was also some some sorrow too. A couple mm -hmm. years later, yep. she was diagnosed on your staff down there um, yep. with cancer, and I mean to have that very high high and that very low low of of that news of the diagnosis. What what was that like to um, have the compassion for her during that time and, and understand what she needed medically to have mm -hmm. done to sustain herself for 10 years with that disease? Well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, Nikki, Nikki actually knew like, like uh, her, her mother, her mother um, was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I'm, I'm going to share this because I'm sure she would want to, she would want to share this with other people so they can get tested and they can get get ahead of it. Um, her mother was diagnosed with breast cancer years ago, um, so basically the doctors told them I think she's got like three other sisters. Mm -hmm. You know, one of them was going to get cancer, like it's just genetics. One of them. And Nikki being the, I believe the oldest, um, was the one. And, um, and, and she was actually happy that it was her and not her siblings. And that's just the way she is. Like, that's just the way she is. Um, so when she told me that she was diagnosed with cancer, I was, I don't know, I was, I was, I was not in the office at the time, but I was, I was, I came back really quick and we talked about things and, you know, she, naturally she's upset. And then she got to a place where she was like, okay, this is what I got. See my mother go through it, you know, let's go. And then, you know, she did her, she did her chemo. She did her chemo before her surgery. So coach Boyer and I were at every chemo treatment and Nikki's got her, you know, her laptop. She's doing her scout reports. We're talking basketball. Like we took our meeting to the, the cancer treatments. Like <laughs> this wow. is just what we do. And mm -hmm. um, we, we saw her ring the bell um, after her treatments. Um, then she had surgery and um, and she had a surgery, I think on a, like a Wednesday. And we're all taking bets again. We're taking bets on when she's going to get back to the office. Right? Right. He's there Monday. Monday. Oh my gosh. Drains where she had a drains. Like, you know, I mean, it was Nikki. Nikki was Nikki needed a focus. Like she needed a focus other than what was happening to her. And she never complained. She never ever complained. She just fought and fought and fought and fought. She fought to coach the game of basketball. She fought to impact lives. She fought um she fought to to see her son. You know, she was fortunate to see ten Christmases, um, ten birthdays, um, and she she's leaving a legacy with her son. And I, you know, I, I thank God that she was able to do that because mm -hmm. little little Thomas Nixon will will be able to understand who his mother is, if not from memory, from certainly people who who his mother impacted for a very long time. Mm, no doubt. And, you know, it was, it was not just basketball for you or for Nikki. 
uh, in terms of impacting your communities. And when Nikki left South Carolina, she got the job at Mississippi State and the state flag in South Carolina was taken down. And so was the state flag in Mississippi. And she said for 126 years in Mississippi, that was situation there. And for her to be on the steps of the Capitol, and I know you, you know, just listening to how you said when you were on the Olympic team, you called her the baby, but she saw what you did, right? And modeled herself after you in a lot of ways. What did that mean for you to see her sit on the steps of the Capitol and have that declared to be so to take the state flag down? Oh, um, bravery. Bravery. Um, and only the strongest are able to to endure what 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 would come after. I mean, she was strong through it, but there was some backlash for sure. She didn't get the results that she wanted, or did she get the tenure that she wanted? Um, but you know, God works in mysterious ways. She was able to she was able to take that year off, and then and then finish what we now know is her career with Coquise, who loved yeah. up on her. Coquise yes. allowed Nikki to live out her passion. And we didn't know it was going to be short-lived, but to be around someone like Coquise and Rutgers mm -hmm. and the community in just the one year, I mean, the conversations that I've had with Coquise um, after Nikki's death and the in, the impact. Uh, Nikki's, Nikki's pastor Hmm. And she, Nikki's pa actually Nikki's pastor from ODU preached um, her service, wow. and he did an incredible job. So much so that I I, I tuned into his service the next day. Oh, actually, wow. but he wasn't there because he actually missed his flight to get back. So it's it's this is is a uh, other preachers stepped in, you know. But I met him. I went up to him. I just told him thank you because he. He did Nikki right. Like he mm -hmm. loved up on Nikki. You know, he he loved up on Thomas. He loved up on little Thomas. And he brought us together in that church. And he made sure that the people that were in that church that, that, that were celebrating Nikki's life knew there's a higher power. And yes. you better get to know them. You better get to know them. You yeah. better get to know them. Nikki knew him. So... Um, so I, I rest assured, I'm, I'm sad that I don't get a chance to talk to my friend, um, in person or, or texting or, um, uh, communicating with her on the phone. Um, but when I look at the memories, when mm -hmm. I feel the memories, when I, when I, when I call Thomas, when I talk to little Thomas, when I talk to Miss Pinson, I know the legacy that lives well on. Um, and, and, and who my friend was, and that's Nikki, little Nick, Nick, Nikki McCray. <laughs> oh my. And I, I understand, obviously you were at the service and I know how yeah. powerful you are as a speaker <laughs> and an orator. I mean, your hall of fame speech was, I mean, every time I see you, I think I say like, it was absolutely amazing. What did you share with the church? that day about the celebration of life for Nikki? I mean, that was probably the hardest, the hardest. Um, because, you know, you just, you just don't know. I, I, I made sure that I shared Thomas, big Thomas, yeah. because there would not be a legacy like Nikki left with us without, you know, without her husband, without mm -hmm. the person that was with her that took every step, every step of, you know, every curve that happened in her career, every move, you know, every every loss, every win, Thomas was right there. And I thanked him. I thanked him for allowing Nikki to come to South Carolina and spend nine years. I thanked him for mm -hmm. going to ODU. Um and I thank them for going up to Rutgers. And, you know, they're Southerners. You know, they're Southerners. So they they went up to Rutgers. And um, 
I, and I, I I told the story about how little Thomas got his name, um, Nixon. Um, and then I told, you know, some funny stories about her and her and Ruthie singing a national anthem through, um, throughout our 96 um, training and, mm -hmm. and how much uh, they used to get on our nerves singing that song um, offbeat <laughs> at times. Um, and then I just I just told the people um, that I that I, I deeply love Nikki. Like I love. Yeah, I, I love Nikki. Nikki was a sister, a friend. You know, she was someone that was truly organic. Like, mm -hmm. she was genuine. She was just Nikki. Like, right. you know, she gave me a, 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 a black Louis scarf for my 50th birthday. Mm -hmm. And I carry it in my bag. I, I've always carried it in my bag. Now, now I, I have a reason, like a, a true reason. You know, it is to to make sure that Nikki's always with me, and I'm always, I'm always feeling her light yeah. because she loved the game. Like she really, truly loved the game. So she she helped me be a better recruiter. She helped me come into this office and not and not feel like it's a job because of who I was doing it with. Right. And she was she was that for for us for nine years that she was with us. And then when she left us, there wasn't a day, like a game that went by that she didn't wish us. She didn't say BTA, right? Like she, <laughs> it wasn't a day that she didn't text BTA. It wasn't a right. birthday. It wasn't a holiday that she did not text. Mm, so it was incredible. Oh, that's absolutely incredible. And, and just, um, just wrapping up here, just the legacy that she has left for not just her family and her friends, but for uh, so many fans, so many players who she reached as, as a, a coach and a mentor, um, in particular, Asia Wilson, right? Um, just with the players who she recruited like that, won a championship with her in 2017, and then you did it over again, you know, as, as a coach at South Carolina 2022, but just the, the impact that she has left on women's basketball and basketball as a whole, not just women's basketball. But what would you say you see in a player like Asia Wilson? Nikki, Nikki realized um, coaching the good ones was, was a lot easier than, than anything. So with them, you, you have to be really conscious of what you give them. Like, really, because they know the difference between, you know, BS and what's real. And Nikki had a way of giving young people what they needed in moments that they really needed it. She didn't overdo things. Uh, maybe she, she, she probably overdo things with people who aren't as, you know, talented as an Asia Wilson or a Leah Boston. Like the ones that told her that they want to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. And they could have just been just trying to, you know, finish a conversation, just trying to finish, oh, well, I want to be great. Well, Nikki took that seriously. Like right. when you, and then when you tell her that you can't jump off, you can't jump off that train, you already said it. So if you try to, if you try to jump off, Nikki's pulling you back on. And you you probably don't even like it very much because because it is her asking you to do things that you don't feel like doing on a daily basis. She stayed on it, so that is her legacy. Mm -hmm. And I and I hope that young people will 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 confide in their coaches, like like the young people that Nikki coached confided in her and told her what they wanted to accomplish. And they had the they had the stamina to continue, mm -hmm. even when those young people didn't. You want somebody in your life like that. You want somebody to get on your nerves because they want you to be great because mm -hmm. you said it and because they want that for you. That is That's Nikki's right. legacy. Mm. I love that. I love that. And, you know, the mystics are inducting. 
Nikki McRae Pinson into their Hall of Fame this summer. And if you had some insight or some information or something that you wanted to tell the Mystics fans about Nikki, who still to this day, even at the last game just a couple of days ago, are wearing the jersey number 15 from when she first ran through the tunnel on the first game for the Washington Mystics here, the founding fans of the Washington Mystics, what would you uh, say to them? What would your message to the Mystics fans be about Nikki McRae Pinson? Well, the, I mean, the Mystics fans are truly one of the fan bases that are loyal. Um, one of the fan bases that that rock the house because I was I, I was a visitor there in the Eastern Conference a lot, um, and that was one of the hardest places to play. Uh, and they still are creating that. Um, I just thank them for continuing the love um, that they display night in and night out for, for not just the current roster, but also um, the legends. And Nikki McCray Pinson is a legend um, in that franchise. Um, so thank you. Thank you for not forgetting her. Thank you for continuing to love up on her. Um, thank you for your 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 constant reminder of who Nikki McCray Pinson was, is, and um, and and the legacy that will continue. So so thank you, the Mystics fans, and uh, um, we'll see you in uh deep in the playoffs. <laughs> hey Dawn, you know what? You know a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. And the fact that you lit that candle for her as an Olympian several times and then had her on board on your staff, lit the candle again. And for you to uh, do that, not just for Nikki, but for her family, her son, um, and everyone who has been impacted by her, that's not lost on me. And you know that. I mean that from the heart. So a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. And Nikki McRae's light will never be extinguished because of what you meant for her and what she meant for so many. So I definitely appreciate your time and you sharing all of what you shared with us today. It was really enlightening and beautifully done. Thank you.